Hey everyone, thanks for trying to learn to play games. My name is Lance, and in today's video I'm going to teach you how to play Dark Ridge Reunion. This is a killer party game. This one will take you back to your days in high school and your rivalries between the jocks, the geeks, and the rebels. So in this game, this is a party game designed for 6 to 12 players. This is one from Starlux Games, and it is going to take you roughly anywhere between an hour to two hours to play. So in the game itself, you are going to take on one of the roles from one of the rival factions. Again, whether it is the jocks, the rebels, or the geeks. Each one of the different characters is going to have a backstory along with a story that they're going to choose for their current day and the ways that they're going to get points. They're also going to receive a secret mission, which might end up having them be the slasher, which is the murderer in your midst that is trying to kill people to gain points. As players die, they could also become ghosts, so nobody is ever eliminated from the game. And the ghost faction will grow as more players die, and that faction can also earn points by a way of another set of cards that I'll get into during the game. So there's a lot of different things going on within this game, and the biggest things with this one is deciding how much of a role-playing game you want this to be. You can have players dress up and pretend to be these different characters, giving them the their roles before the game even starts or before you decide to get together. It is totally up to you and your group of players and how you want to approach this. Now a couple of important things that you're going to need is a large area that is divided into at least three different sections that players can go to and secretly meet with each other without having to have other interactions with the other areas. So that's the biggest thing. Now you can have a larger area, a house would be great for this where you have multiple rooms that players can move in and out of and uh, potentially kill each other other in and among other things be able to talk back and forth uh, to try to get the points and achieve different goals based on what they're trying to do. So again in this video I'm going to teach you how to play starting with components, setup, player turns or end or rounds and end game conditions. As always if you find these videos helpful if you like what I do please consider hitting that like button subscribing to my channel which means these ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow and build to produce this content. If you want to stay today in all my videos, also considering that bell, so notifications anytime I release new stuff, as I'm always dropping new videos, whether it's playthroughs, unboxings, teaching videos, and all kinds of other ones. So if you want to stay up to date, go ahead and ring that bell so you get notifications when I drop new stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and head to the table. We'll see how this one plays. The first thing I want to go over are the character roles. So these are going to be either be signed during setup or you can do this prior to that if you're going for a more role playing feel where you want players to actually dress up as their roles. And there are going to be three different classes that players are going to play as. You'll have geeks, jocks, and rebels. And there's going to be four of each one of the classes and each one is going to have a name of that particular character and it'll list the faction that they're part of. And then the back side of their card is going to be what they were in high school. And then each player is going to have to choose their current role. So there will be three different options that that player will currently have. And these are going to kind of give you the overall gist of what your character is and then what your requirements are for acts one, two, and three. At the bottom of the card is also going to provide you with a quick reference of the different acts and what's going on within them. Each player will also have a lanyard that will hold their character uh, card and will also provide them with areas that they can hold some of their other stuff, which I'll show you during setup. On top of your character card that you're going to be given at the beginning of the game, you're also going to receive a secret mission, and these are going to give you the different ways of scoring points. Each one of these will list the name of that particular secret mission at the top, along with any types of rules and then the ways you're going to get points and suggestions on how you can potentially achieve those. Some of these will have the advanced settings, so if you're not playing with the advanced game, go ahead and take those out before you deal them out to each player. Now, you're always going to include the slasher and the sheriff in your games, and I'll go over this more in setup, but these two particular secret missions will always be included in all games. When playing in the advanced game, there's also a fourth faction, which is the ghost faction. Now, nobody will actually start as this faction, but when a player dies, they were going to go back to the counter and they'll collect a card for this. And so there are going to be all kinds of different ghost objective cards. Each one of these cards will provide a different type of action that the player must carry out. If they are successful in carrying that out, then they will receive points for it. And then they must return to the counter to gain another objective. 
When the player, when a player first becomes a ghost, if they can make it to the counter without anybody noticing them, they're going to receive two points for that. And then from that point on, anytime they need to get a objective card, they're gonna select the top two, choose one that they would like to keep, and place the other on the bottom of the stack. And this will continue for all players to become ghosts. So the ghost faction in the game might end up being the winning faction depending upon how many players there are and how many objectives they've been able to meet. Another card that you're going to use in the advanced mode are artifact cards, and these are going to give you one use only certain types of benefits. Each player during setup will draw two of these from the pouch randomly, select one that they like to keep, and place the other back in the pouch. Now, you, some players can show their artifacts right away, or other players will want to keep them secret as these are very powerful single-use abilities that could potentially save your life or do other nasty things to players, so you might not always want to reveal your artifact to other players. Each artifact will list the name of that artifact on the back of the card, along with what its effects are. For example, with Poison, when alone with one character, you can show this artifact to silently kill them. And then the rules for this will be outlined here, so the victim dies instantly. Using this makes you a killer. And then finally, it's also going to provide you with a tip, a way of using it. So for example, you can use this for protection or to eliminate the top score of another team. This is a one-time use only, and then you'll return this to the pouch at the end of the act. And there's going to be a whole collection of these, such as Scorpion or Gaze of Dread, Time Stopper, Shield, and many others. And each one of them will work a little bit differently. All right, so at this point, we're ready to move into setup. So the important thing with this is to decide what kind of game you're playing. There are two different modes. There's the basic mode or the advanced mode. I'm going to teach you how to play the advanced mode. The basic mode just base has you return all of the advanced stuff, such as the artifact cards and the ghost cards as you won't be using them, and certain secret mission cards, which again, everything is going to be labeled with the A, as you can see here. Anything that has that on there is an advanced mode option. So if you just want to play the basic game or really just kind of get the rules down, go ahead and set up for that. Otherwise, let's get into the advanced mode. So first off, each player, whether you're playing advanced or basic, is going to receive one of these uh, character cards. Now with these, again, you're going to, depending upon the number of players, you're going to take out a number of these uh, equal to each one of the factions. So each faction is going to have four of the character cards in it. So depending upon how many you're playing, if you're playing with nine players, then you're going to take three of each faction and then deal them out to the players. Uh, once each player receives one of these, again, just like you saw earlier with the components, that player is going to or read through their card, select or getting their backstory down, and then making a selection for what type of a character they want to be in this game. Each one of these, again, is going to give you your new kind of what's going on, and then what your different goals are for the different acts, which there are going to be three different acts in the game. So once each player has their character card, then you're going to deal each player a secret mission. Again, with these secret missions, depending upon the number of players, you're going to take a number of them out. So first off, you're always going to include the slasher and sheriff. And then from there, you're going to, to randomly select the number of these based on the number of players. So let's go ahead and say that we're playing with an eight player game. I'm gonna set these two off to the side, shuffle these up, and draw six more of them. That way then I have a total of eight secret mission cards. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Two, four, six, and the slasher and sheriff. So then we'll shuffle those up in there with these so that we don't know who's getting what. All right, and then let's go ahead and deal the top one to this player, which is Secret Crush. So with this one, it's again going to outline additional ways of getting points and you're going to select one of these options to be your secret mission. Now, you won't be able to achieve all of these. You're gonna select one of them, and that is the one that you're going to choose. And now, the important thing with this is that it is on an honor system. You must stick with whatever one you choose and be honest about that throughout the game, even if it's one that's harder as the ones that are more difficult to achieve are gonna be worth more points for your team. But they're also, again, going to be a little harder to achieve, so you might not be able to do it. So you won't be able to choose to change up throughout the game. You must stick with one that you choose. Then each player, you're gonna shuffle up the artifact cards. And once they're good and shuffled up, you're going to place them back in the bag. And then you'll choose whichever player you want to start with. That player will reach into the bag and choose two of these cards. 
secretly. You don't want to show these other players just yet. And then once you have chosen your two, you'll choose one of those you want to keep. So let's go ahead and say that I want the time stopper. So from there, then the other one that you don't select will go back into the bag and this will be passed to the next player to make their selection. Now, a nice thing about the lanyard is it's designed specifically for this. So there's a little slit at the bottom here in the back of the pouch to place your other cards. So you'll have your secret mission card that you'll place in the back there and then your artifacts can be placed in front of that as some of the artifacts will require you to show it to other players. So this way, when you're wearing it, you can just flip it over and bam, it's right there for you, ready to go, depending upon the artifact you've selected, and then you're ready to go again. So you'll wanna keep this facing away from you so that other players don't necessarily know what you have, or you can rearrange that however you need to to make it as effective for yourself as possible. Finally, you're gonna, so whoever is, has been selected as the slasher from their secret missions will need to take the dagger. In order to do this, first off, you wanna make sure that the dagger works as it is going to have batteries in it at the bottom. You'll wanna flip it on just to double check to see if it works. Now, sometimes it won't work and there is a little plastic tab in here. So if I take that tab out, now it should work. Now, it doesn't glow really bright, but of course, this is a very bright studio. So there is a light in here that will illuminate this. Uh, there's also a light at the bottom, so you'll know it's working uh, if you're in a very lit area. Um, as the killer will have to have it on in order to use it. So anytime the killer kills somebody, make sure that they show you that that light is on to confirm that you've been killed properly. Other than that, you can keep that off. So in order to have the slasher have an opportunity to take their dagger, and this is another important fact, is that all the players, when they come, need to have a way to conceal this, whether it's wearing baggy clothes or having a large purse or whatever you need to conceal this, because you never know who's going to be the slasher. From there, you're gonna place that out in the center of the table, and all the players are gonna close their eyes and count to 30, making you know different noises and different things, uh, counting through and altering their pitch and that that way then nobody really knows who the slasher is that player will go ahead and secretly take the dagger and hide it on their person somewhere however they want to do that so that they can conceal that and have their dagger the last part of setup is the ghost deck so you'll go ahead and uh, remove that top card and shuffle this deck up and place this out on a center counter or table or however you want to do it for the ghost players and you'll place that welcome card on the top and place that out as well that way then whoever happens to die first will have the opportunity uh, to try to get to their ghost cards to start getting the objectives and getting their points from there you're ready to begin the game and there are a number of different little areas that you can and or read through to kind of set the mood and get ready for act one all right, so before getting into Act 1, let's go over my character a little bit more just to make sure that you understand how everything works. So first off, as my character, I am Casey Vanderloom, and with this, I am going to be a geek and a teacher. So with this, the little bit of the backstory is developing young minds is what it's all about. Okay, maybe sometimes it's about validating yourself. Heaven knows you don't get enough of that when you are in high school, but now as a teacher, surely your classmates will respect you. So from there, that is my backstory. Then I have to choose what I currently or who I am now. I can be the cool teach, I can be the disciplinarian, or I can be a science teacher. So let's go ahead and say that I want to be the cool teach. Remember the teacher everyone had a crush on? That's you, or so you'd like to think. And you're ready to show your classmates that you deserve every bit of that attention. So this one is going to break down the different acts for me. So first off, with Act 1, this is going to be consistent across the board. You're going to connect with your team and strategize. During Act 2, get, get another player to say you're cool. And during Act 3, get someone to do something physical. Then use a slang term to compliment that person, such as, dude, that was killer. So though that would be, let's go ahead and say that I do that. So those are my different goals for that. Then I have my secret mission. So mine is a secret crush. You've always hid or had feelings for someone outside of your team. You get to choose who and you can, can you ignite a flame. So you're going to choose only one mission. Do so at, uh, before Act 1. So this one I can choose to profess, my la uh, profess your lasting love 
for them, and this one would get you two points, uh, woo your love by giving them an artifact, which would give you three points, or score both acts two and three goals with them, getting four points. And then provide, and again, it provides suggestions. So for example, let's with this one, let's go ahead and say that I choose the bottom one. I really want to get a lot of points for my team. So I'm going to go with scoring both act two and act three goal with them. So in this way, then I'm I, now I have the goals set and I also have my artifact, which is the time stopper. This one lets me freeze everyone in the room or me, me in the vicinity. You must freeze for 30 seconds. So that will give me a little bit of a gap if I run into some problems or if the uh, killer decides to show themselves to me. So from here then, we're ready to move into Act 1. So each one of these is going to have a set amount of time that the players are going to play through during each one of these acts. And you can set this however you want to. The game or the, the rule book itself instructs about 20 minutes. So you'll have a 60 minute game. But you can set these shorter or longer however you want. Now during Act 1 there won't be any artifacts being used and you can't kill anybody if you're the slasher and stuff like that. This is mainly set up for the role playing aspect of the game. So you're going to get together with your teammates, uh, the guys or the guys and girls that are on your team, whichever faction you're part of. So like I'm part of the geek faction so I'm going to want to get together with the rest of the geeks and start strategizing and talking. And again this, this part of the game is all about the role playing. Whether you really want to get into this really playing into those roles or if you're just more about playing the game itself. So you're never going to actually reveal your secret mission card. Now you can talk about it and again with this you can simply say what you're trying to achieve or you can do it in a role-playing way kind of masking it and then just kind of revealing it in a more natural way as opposed to just telling people what you're doing. So with this, you're going to start wanting to work with your team and decide or de de decide strategies and, and all kinds of different things for that. So talking with your other players is going to be very important as the team that has the most points in the game is going to be a winning team. So you want to be able to work together with your team to the best of your ability to maximize these points. Now that, that all uh, is well and good until somebody dies, of course, and then they are going to become part of the ghost faction and they're going to have their own separate team that is going to have to to work together uh, as the game develops and as the rounds go by there might be more and more players being added to that so that is the part of act one so again act one will go for 20 minutes or for whatever time span you set and this is mainly to mingle with your team divine does uh de coming up with different strategies and ways for your team and your players within that team to meet the goals of their the, their secret mission and how they're going to accomplish that now, Act 2 is going to be the main act that players are going to be doing a lot of stuff in. This is going to be the longest act in the game, and this one can run anywhere from 30 to 50 minutes, again, being set by whoever is running this game. So in this act, this is where players are going to actually be able to start getting points. Players could potentially kill other players. Now, the important thing with this is that whether you're trying to achieve your different goals or your different uh, things for the particular act, all of this has to be done on a one-to-one -one basis. So you must be in a room with another player or character alone and isolated from other players and characters that don't see you. So you're going to have to, this is a one-on-one -on -one interaction. And each time you achieve your goal, it's going to be worth a point. Now, of course, you have your secret mission that's going to be worth additional points if you can achieve that. But each one of your things, for example, with my cool teacher, during Act 2, I'm trying to get another person to say that I'm cool. So I can do this with each other player, so I can get this multiple times. And each time I am able to achieve this, it's going to be worth one point on top of any goals that I have for my secret mission. So players are going to be constantly trying to get alone with other players so that they can try to work on their goals. So try not to spend too much time in a room so that other players have opportunities to get into those rooms alone with other players so that everybody has fair shots at trying to meet their goals and objectives. From there, let's talk about the slasher or players with poison that for the artifact cards, different ways of killing players. Again, you must be alone and isolated. Only you and another player. If you are the slasher, you must be alone with another player. And then from there, you is all, all you need to do is touch that player with the dagger and it has to be lit. So you got to make sure it's on. 
And as long as it is on, all you have to do is touch them and they are instantly dead. Now you want to try to do this as secretly as possible because if the other player happens to see you, you know, you're fumbling around, you pull out the dagger and you're like, ha, ah, that player can run. They can also scream and yell and do all kinds of other things up until the point when you touch them. As soon as you touch them, they have to go quiet, they have to be silent, and they have to, to lay down immediately and they're dead at the, that point. So... That is a big thing with both the slasher and poison. Once the player is shown the card, they are immediately dead and they can't do anything about it. But up until that point, if the player happens to see the dagger or whatever, it can be an all out chase. They can run, they can yell and scream and all kinds of other things. So as the slasher, make sure that you are careful about when and how you choose to kill other players. And again, you, they have to be isolated, so it only can be you and one other player in a room without any other players paying attention to what's going on in that room. So you have to be very mindful of your surroundings. From there, once a player is dead, they will become a ghost, and that's where the ghost deck is going to come into play. This is going to be in a central location where all the players can get to it. And as a ghost player, if you're able to get to the ghost deck without anybody else realizing that you're a ghost, then you're going to automatically get two points. You can discard all of the rest of your cards and character and all that kind of stuff. And from this point on, each time you need to gain objectives, you're going to take the top two objective cards from the stack. You'll go ahead and read them and choose one of them that you want to keep. The other one will go back face down at the bottom of that deck. And then this can be kept in your lanyard from this point on. And again, you can discard the rest of the cards. You won't need an artifact, a secret mission, all that kind of stuff from that point on. Now with the ghost players, they can only whisper or do whatever is on their card. Some of these will allow you to wail and carry on, but otherwise, when any time you're communicating or whatnot, you have to whisper and you're not allowed to touch any other players from this point on as you're a ghost. So you wouldn't actually be able to touch them anyways. Your hand would just go right through them. So that is the important things with the ghost players. And anytime you achieve an objective, those again are gonna be worth two points, and then you can go back to the table and gain a new objective. So in this way, you might be able to gain multiple objectives per act really racking up some points for the ghost team. Uh, and then as more players are defeated and killed, they can achieve these objectives as well, going there and getting new objective cards. So from there, at the end of Act 2, once Act 2 has come to an end, the timer has sounded, there is going to be an interlude between Acts 2 and 3. During this interlude, the players cannot use artifact cards and they can't kill each other or anything like that. Now you can get together with your team and kind of strategize again, going over your Act 3 objectives or goal, and again, going over your secret mission and that kind of stuff, and just kind of collaborating with the, the members of your team that are still alive. And then again, the ghost team now can get together and, and whisper about what they're going to do and what their objectives are in that too. Once you're done with that, you're ready to move into Act 3, which works pretty much the same way as Act 2, except for during Act 3, you're obviously going after your Act 3 objective for your character. And then if your secret mission applies to that, you're going to use that as well. Now, importantly, there, if you've used your, your artifact during Act 2, you will go ahead and discard it at the end of Act 2, and you will not get another one. So it is important to choose the time and when where you want to use your artifact wisely, because you probably will not get another one throughout the game unless you can convince another player to give theirs to you, or uh, depending upon what kind of spe secret mission or uh, different uh, artifact card you have or whatnot. So from there, like I said, it moves into Act 3 where you're trying to achieve your Act 3 goal and potentially secret mission. Again, now this is going to be a shorter act. Again, this one recommends to be set or the recommendation for this one is to set it at 20 minutes. So this is going to be quite a bit shorter than Act 2. So you're going to have to move a little bit faster and try to get through some of those objectives that you have more quickly. Now, once Act 3 comes to a conclusion and the game is over, the final thing is to determine the winner. For this, all of the teams are going to get together with any living members of that team getting together and totaling up all the points that they have for their team. Uh, from there, then the, the living teams, the ghosts players will not be able to do this, but the living teams can choose to bet a certain number of their points to make an accusation of who the slasher is. If the team gets it correct, then they'll receive that number of points. They can select a member of their own team to accuse for this, but then they won't get any points for that. So that is one final way for the teams to get some additional points. 
From there, then the team that has the most points will be the overall winning team of the game. And from there, you can choose to set up again and dish out some new characters and all that and play again or call it a night and play something else. Well, I hope you found this video helpful in playing Dark Ridge Reunion. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please post those in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer them. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do really appreciate it and take into account everything you say to make the best possible videos. Until next time, I'll see you later.